Hello everyone, welcome to Hawkeye Traders. My name is Randy Lindsay, host of today's live interactive session. Welcome to our brand new year of uh, presentations here for 2018. Thank you for joining me. I'm here to educate and inform you on how to use Hawkeye on the live edge of the market, how to apply the tools to the markets and how to use them, set them up properly, and to demonstrate for you any aspect of the software that you might not already have seen. If you do have any questions or comments, Right here on the right-hand side of your GoTo webinar control panel is a questions pane. Please enter your question or comment there. I'll be more than glad to get to them in the order that they're received. Or if I do not get to your question in a timely manner, uh, don't hesitate to repeat them because sometimes uh, due to the number of people in the class, I could um, inadvertently overlook a question. But I try to answer every one of them as best I can. And if I cannot answer your question, I'll be more than glad to research it and give you an email reply back. I'll make sure that everyone here knows that we are an educational company. Uh, we do not provide trading advice. We are not uh, registered to provide trading advice, but we do uh, provide you with education and training to help you to get the most out of the software products that you purchase. So no representation is being made, uh, whether you're going to achieve or do the same thing that we do. Uh, past performance is not indicative of any future results. Make sure that you get advice from a competent financial advisor before investing money in any of these financial instruments. There is a large potential for reward in trading futures, stocks, forex, and options markets. There's also a large potential for risk. You must be aware of the risk and be willing to accept them in order to invest in these markets. And make sure you never trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. Don't trade in a live account unless you have first proven you can consistently and profitably trade in a simulated account with simulated funds and then and only then are you going to be prepared to tackle the live money markets and the mindset games that trading with live money can, can give you. So make sure that you have a proven trading plan, make sure that you uh, have all your rules defined, then you'd be ready to go. The nice thing about the Hawkeye tool set, it gives you definitive tools and rules that you can follow in order to get onto the road of consistent profitability. And I'm, that's what I'm here to help you to do. So whether you're trading Forex markets or futures markets, equity markets, options, whatever it might be, Hawkeye has the tools, Hawkeye has the uh, setups to help you get there. I'm currently showing the NinjaTrader 7 platform. If you have any specific requests, let me know. Any specific indicator that you want me to demonstrate for you, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll just go through and do my regular demonstration where I show the tools in action, show how we look at a setup. I'll show how setups have been identified, how you use the software to get in front of trades that otherwise would have left the station without you, and how to make sure that you take profits out along the way. That's the whole purpose that I'm here. Hello, David. Great to see you again. Happy New Year to you, too. All right. Um, so um, I was looking at the setups. I was noticing the weakness in the pound. If you can see the Hawkeye Fat Man, it's an indicator that shows relative strength and weakness of all of the currency pairs. And I was noticing all the weakness here in the uh, British pound, all the weakness in the euro but you can see that uh, recently, just in the last hour or so, the euro has started to come back with some strength, while all the other currencies, which were previously strong, are now starting to show some signs of weakness. So we're starting to see trends of weakness in all the other currency pairs, the Canadian dollar, the US dollar, the Australian, the Japanese yen, the New Zealand dollar, relative to that euro, but we can still see the Swiss franc and the British pound are extremely weak. Looking at the hourly fat man, we can see all three still in an extremely oversold condition, whereas the US dollar, New Zealand, and Australian all are in an overbought condition. With the Canadian dollar right about fair value, the uh, Japanese yen is trending with strength, but we can see that that became overbought on the 30 minute and now is trending down. So that helps us to identify and to see uh, the, the trends that the market uh, has potential to take. So when you look at the charts, uh, 
you can see that the Australian dollar is extremely strong and the British pound is extremely weak, you can see why there was a really strong downtrend moving and we can see when that was identified. And that's the nice thing about the tools is that you can back test and look to see how and when these were traded. So looking back at previous times, you can see that yesterday afternoon, right at the close of the day, two, three, four o'clock at the end of the day, you could see an extremely weak Australian dollar and extremely strong pound. So that was right about the close of the day, but you can see that there was a last push up. If you look at the longer term, there was a push up on the strength of that pound, but you can see that right about that time, the fat man was signaling that all that strength is starting to come out of that pound. So that right about six o'clock, 1800 hours, you can see that that, uh, that weakness was starting to show and you start, you're starting to get a push up, a last ditch effort, an exhaustion of buyers coming in and then you can see neutral volume showing that the buyers had gone out of the market and then you start to see a, a drastic shift the, the volume start to show an increase in the number of sellers entering this market, saying that people were no longer buying the pound, they were now buying the Australian dollar. So the red volume indicates that the, the buying of the pound is over, that they're selling the pound and now they're buying the Australian. And then that trend began, but it all was signaled a long time before using the Hawkeye Fat Man. The Fat Man is a, 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 a truly valuable tool in identifying market setups and trades, so uh, way ahead of time. If you look at a, a very closer time frame, then you can see here on a 30 minute that that uh, extreme occurred just after 1500, which is like three o'clock yesterday afternoon. So so that that energy started coming off way early, came back up, and then boom, went right back down. And so when that elbow curve occurs, that's usually when the most of the aggressive price action occurs. It's weakness, pause, and then a continuation. And that's what we would be looking for. So on the 30 minute, you could see that a little bit expanded where you can see that turn up, elbow down, and then this is the strength leg of weakness. And when you get that in line with the strength leg of of positive energy in the Australian dollar, then that is the, this is the result of that. So understanding that move of strength versus weakness and coming into these extreme ranges shows you why we've got such a really strong down move uh, and the potential that was in the pound. So uh, George asked, uh, is the Hawkeye volume the lowest most indicator on the screens? Yes. If you look at this line right here, and let me expand that for you just so you can see it here, then the Hawkeye volume is the, the bars that you can see directly underneath the chart. So this is the Hawkeye volume. Okay. Under that is the Hawkeye heat map. And then above that, you can see the roadkill, and the roadkill shows Hawkeye volume on longer time frame. So that's the volume of my third time frame chart. That's the heat map of my second time frame. That is the trend and volume of my second time frame chart. So it's a tool that allows me to see this chart, trend and volume, and this chart's trend and volume if I wanted on my fast time frame chart. That's the roadkill. And of course, I have my price bars right here. You can see the uh, open, high, low, close bars. I can use candles if I like, but each one of these bars are color coded based upon the Hawkeye volume. So that's the Hawkeye volume paint bar indicator showing you the relationship between price, action, and volume together. It's a very, very useful tool and it allows you to look at price and volume together. Yeah, the uh, purple colored bar is the current building bar. So if you were to see that bar right there, oh, I can't get down far enough, can I? Let me see, there it is right there. See this, that bar on the far right uh, in the volume is purple because it's the current building bar. 
once that bar closes, it will be color coded red, white, or green. And it's purple just to say that right now, we're not gonna display the color because it's constantly changing, it's dynamic. So the distribution of volume on that price bar is constantly changing. And so when we see this bar right here close, that's when we'll see the color of that volume bar identified. All right, sounds good. Uh, what the roadkill here is showing you, these are the, the locations that you can re-enter the trend. It shows locations of weakness along the trend, and then when the trend resumes the normal direction, the roadkill identifies that by signaling that the trend is resuming and that these are times to get in or to re-enter. So when the initial trend started right here, you got a signal, but the uh, second and third time frame, third time frames didn't allow you to get in if you were following the three-step entry exit method. If you waited until the alignment occurred, and that didn't occur until right here, the very first alignment occurred right here where all of the time frames agreed that this was the entry. And it just so happened at a close below prior pivot. So this was a true breakout of congestion retest and then a re-entry gave us another signal so if you missed this initial signal then this gave you the secondary entry so this was the first one and this became the second entry uh, for the trades okay and then once you follow the rule set then you can see that i'm following that allowing these stops to hold you in uh, gets you the majority of that trade Otherwise, if you take level rules to exit the trade, then you exit at specific profit targets to make sure you're always going to get at least a three to one risk reward ratio. So the Hawkeye tools are set up to help you to do that. George, uh, does that save processing time so you're not doing three calculations in real time? Um, it's doing all the calculations. Uh, 300 calculations is we're doing all that in the background. Uh, but we're having to go through and look at the overall distribution of each one of these bars. So in, in this building bar right here, you can see an open, high, low, and close. It has a specific distribution of volume over that price bar. And so it's not like it saves any time in doing that. It just saves confusion on your part because if this were color coding itself red based upon the current distribution, and then all of a sudden it changes to white, or if it changes back to green and then it changes back to red again, it's just confusing. So we wait until the bar closes to get an accurate distribution profile and an accurate relationship of price. Then we color code it and give you a very clear indication of how that bar is, is to be processed. The uppermost indicator uh, is a trailing stop line. Yes, that's. This right here is our trailing stop. It's the Hawkeye stop and crash barrier, and it will automatically trail based upon average true range of the price. So we're, we're right about two to two and a half ATRs above price, and the dot that you see is the Hawkeye trend dot uh, that shows you the direction of trend based on color, and the uh, it's, it is an automatic uh, trailing uh, resistance line so you can see that this serves as a support or resistance line based upon the current direction that you are trading and so we have our three-step entry exit method and the six ways the market moves teaching is all built upon uh, understanding the relationship of price relative to these trend dots so it's, a, it's an important key uh, to uh, harnessing the power of the Hawkeye system and developing a systematic approach to trading so that you're not just trading here, there, in the air. You're trading with a, a method that is proven and that you can follow to uh, make consistent profits. You're very welcome. Well, that's correct. Yeah. Um, so doing the calculations, it, it all it all occurs at the close of the bar. So that way it's not doing it tick by tick by tick. So that's correct. Now, there is a setting in the software. If you go in and format the indicators, if you go to the Hawkeye volume indicator, then there is a, a, 
a switch here that allows you to calculate the bars on close or calculate every bar. So this data, right now it says calculate on bar close. That's true. We will not do any of the calculations of the volume until the actual bar closes, just like you had mentioned. It saves a lot of time and computational energy. But if you were to go through and change this to false, then it will calculate it every single tick. So when when it's true, otherwise it's going to calculate it on every single tick, and it will be CPU intensive. So yes, very good, very good point there, George. But you have the option. If you really like to see what it's doing in real time, then yes, you can switch it on and enable that. Absolutely. Chris wants to know what are the yellow red dots above and below the price? Okay. These uh, yellow dots that you see here, this is the Hawkeye Pivot. It is part of the um, Hawkeye Volume Starter Package. So these are the uh, identified uh, isolated highs and lows. So those are important to point out, and we uh, make sure we, we paint those on the bars to, to show you where we expect short-term price reversal or three to five price bars is the average that we expect to see when we see an isolated high or an isolated low. And when you start to see clusters of isolated highs and lows together, then that will give you an identified congestion channel that you can then use to help you to trade breakouts. So it's a multifaceted tool that helps you to identify and trade those based upon your own rule sets. Very powerful. Oh yeah, Georgia. If you get a super powerful machine someday, yeah, you can calculate every bar. It might or might not help you though. So we, but we give you the option to do either one. Is there a delay in showing the pivots? Not at all. But the pivot is a as a predefined condition. So if you're to look at the pivots themselves, um, if you look at that nice yellow dot above that little green bar then you can see that that is an isolated high. An isolated high by definition is a high that is higher than the previous price bar and the next price bar. So by definition, the dot cannot paint until the close of the following bar. In this example, the following bar is the white price bar to the right of the green one with the yellow dot on the top, and the previous bar is the green one to the left of it. So as soon as the white bar on the right closes, then the yellow dot paints immediately on top of that small green bar in the center, identifying it as an isolated high. Now you can see as it's building whether the bar will be a, an isolated high or not before the bar closes, and that kind of helps you to understand this. So if you follow our teaching on the six ways the market moves, that's one of the fundamental rules that we teach you is identifying isolated highs and lows in the market so that you can use that to determine where you are in the market at any one time. So it's not a bar delay, it's just a, by definition, you cannot identify an isolated high or low until the following bar closes. So before you see that yellow dot, you, you have to see that white bar close. So that's if you want to consider, if you if you want to view that as a one bar delay, then yes, I don't consider it a delay because it's by definitions. It's painting exactly when it should paint. That's correct. Mm, yeah, yeah. This is this is a one bar delay. So if you see, I know it's a little bit small now, but if you see this bar, once that bar paints, this will this will plot, and that gives you plenty of time to identify this. Um, without without the previous bar, there's no way to identify structure in this element. So you have to have that following bar in order to not only identify the structure but to see the um, price bar itself. 
It's very good. Um, this is an invaluable tool that we use all the time in our trading. When that's coupled with volume, then it becomes an extremely useful tool. Yeah, I'm showing it on trades on NinjaTrader, but it works every bit as well on TradeStation or MetaTrader 4, um, and TradingView even, where we're going to be launching that out this month as well. So um, I hope that you understand that. Absolutely. All right, so uh, if you've been following this, you saw that the setup came into an area of congestion. The markets had recently opened, and right when the markets open, you can see our five-minute chart had given us a nice continuation signal that the trend had gone sideways, consolidated, then started to continue down. Notice that the, the automatic trailing stops went flat to hold you at in so that it didn't stop you out inadvertently. But then as the trend started to continue, the automatic trailing stops also started to continue on that trade. You could also see on the longer term that we had come down into uh, lower uh, support. So this is a demand zone where we expect to see buyers come in, but notice the volume never changed. And now that we have broken the bottom of that price, that also signaled that this became a breakout bar and we were looking at this price continuing down to the next zone of opposite type, which is this new demand zone here, 1.7248. So if you can look at that blown up there, then that then would become the next zone that we would be targeting. So price should go down and at least touch or hit a 1.7248 as a lower price target as a continuous continuation of this and that's because uh, we had the strength to break through the demand zone that was divided here so now this becomes a consolidation supply zone its its target is this demand zone which was previously formed back on the first of the month you can see that just below that is a brown zone. That brown zone has been there, zone has been there for quite some time, and you can look back in time and see that that has been there, has served as really nice and solid support for quite a time. So you can see every time it hit, it bounced off of it, and a lot of buyers would be coming into the market, reversing the direction of this price on the pound Aussie. So now we're seeing the price coming back down to retest not only the previous zone, but now hopefully this one. And like the analogy of the tree, with enough strength, the uh, zone can be broken. So uh, the, the longer the zone has been there, it's like a, a tree. You've hit the tree, more times you hit the tree, the higher the probability is that that tree is gonna fall. So there's a, a good chance that this might or might not hold. And if it does not hold, then you can see the target on the downside would be a 17153. If it does hold, then it's a good chance that price would retrace back up and retest the 17, I can't read that, uh, yeah, 17401 level. And that's the, uh, the upside target. And above that, you can see whenever price came back up and retested these prior supply zones, you can see volume sellers are started to come in aggressively. And then once that occurs, you can see volume related to price in a zone gives you a real clear indication of where that price is going to be going. So it's really good to see that. Okay, Marcel, can you talk about the colors of the zones and which are more penetratable than others? Um, any of them can be penetrated at any time, but uh, the darker the color, the um, longer it the color has been there. So if I were to go and pull up my indicator list, and if I were to go to my Hawkeye zones, okay, then you can see on the zones there are specific color definitions uh, based upon how many times price has interacted with that zone. We call them a bounce. So when price comes down, hits its own, and bounces off of it like that, okay, we call that a bounce. So when, anytime, if it's a brand new zone, it's aqua color. So price comes back up, it creates this zone. This is aqua in color. That means price has only hit it and been there one time. So right here, you can see this has only been one. It's an aqua color. Price has not hit that zone at all. If the price has bounced off the zone at least one time, 
and you can see here that price formed, came up, bounced off of it one time, then this turned blue. If this price now, after it hits here, if it comes right back out of here, then it would change it from this blue to now an orange color. So now then it had interacted twice because it came out, came back right here, and then it went back off again. Came up, came back down, but it never came back out. So it would have turned orange, but now it's going to go away. The next color is purple, and we saw a couple of those. Uh, that means that price has interacted with it three times. And then the last color is saddle brown. That's the color you see here. Price has interacted with that four or more times. It's considered an old uh, stalwart. Um, it's got all the history there. It, could, it can be there for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, even several months. Uh, so these are the major uh, support resistance areas that if they're broken, you're expecting to see some really strong price, price action following that. Uh, the aqua zones, uh, we, we have a term that we call a money bounce. So the very first time that price interacts with an aqua colored zone, we refer to that as a money bounce because it's the highest probability reversal. So it doesn't mean every time it hits it, it will reverse. It just means that of all of the zones, it has the highest probability to reverse or bounce off of it if it is an aqua color. So I hope that answers uh, your most of your questions there, Marcel. George, uh, is it easy for me to look at a five-minute chart on the spider? You trade the spider options. Is it kind of a hassle? No, it's not a hassle at all. I could easily do that. Would you prefer, I, you mentioned TradeStation, or you want me to show it on the TradeStation platform? I'll be more than glad to do that. I can also show it here in Ninja. Trade station. All right, let me, let me pop over there for you real quick. All right. Yeah, I also um, trade longer term uh, options and stocks, so um, I'm very well versed on on doing that. You can see that I've been monitoring and watching gold and gold stocks, so they've been very, uh, very uh, well rewarding recently. So let me go and pull up the spider for you. Looking at the spider, you can see the uh, the Hawkeye tools. Looking at daily, weekly, monthly is what I usually like to look at. And absolutely, um, trading off of options gives you the, um, the exact same uh, relationship. So when you see consolidation building here, Okay, these are excellent points to look at taking options, especially when you see price extension on opposing volume, then this is an awesome opportunity to start putting a put onto a long position if you don't want to get rid of that position. It just secures the downside so that you're not wasting any precious uh, uh, payments or if you're getting any type of uh, interest or um, dividend payments, then it protects the downside, allows you to collect your dividends, and when the trend comes back in, then you just remove your put and continue to use that. And these are also excellent locations on buying call options if you're just trading long calls. So at this point, when you see a a, a long position, instead of buying the over underlying position itself, that's a, a great opportunity to just establish um, longer term, three month or so, call options and just allowing that call option to appreciate over time while the uh, continuation of the trend. And you can see the trailing stop here goes holds you in during that period of time as well. If you're just trading the equity by itself, these are your buy points. This, this shows you that it's gotten weak, um, it's gone sideways, but it's just created a nice little cup and handle pattern. On the break of that cup and handle, you get confirmation that the second and the third time frames have aligned to get you back into the existing trend. So this gives you a rebuy point. You can see it went back into a higher handle right here. So you can see a new continuation line right here to get you back into that trade. It's a break of that higher uh, handle and a continuation of the trend. And those are excellent continuation and buy points. So that's exactly what you want to do to look at that. Uh, Marcel, how do you know what call strike to buy? 
Um, the call strikes are based upon your own risk preferences, of course. I like to buy with enough um, time left so that um, I'm not, I don't have to get rid of it. So I like to look at two to three months minimum time. So I'm looking at 60 to 90 days out on the options. So March options are what I'm buying right now. Uh, or selling, put it if you want to look at it that way. So I need enough time uh, on the the instruments to be able to hold them, so that if you get less than 30 days, then time decay becomes your enemy, unless you're selling options, and then they be, it becomes your friend. So it depends upon your strategy and what it is that you're trying to do, and uh, how to approach that. But uh, these become excellent tools to help you to do that and uh, a great way to leverage the, uh, the amount of trading that you've got in the markets. So these are just simple daily, weekly, and monthly charts. Uh, the fat boy I've got here shows you relative strength of, of different positions. Here I've got gold and crude oil, which we've seen since um, – the, uh, you know, since last month and even into the beginning of this year, we saw the turn back in December, and I said gold is the one to be watching right now because we saw it bottoming out. The fat boy confirmed that by showing it a nice trend of strength. Crude oil, likewise, showing it had consolidated in almost an oversold condition, but showing a nice trend of strength coming into Christmas and then strengthening and continuing to go back up into $60 even into the new year. So um, all the bullishness that we had seen is uh, show, being shown here in the, uh, the Hawkeye Fat Boy on a daily trend chart. So I hope that answered the, the specific question that you asked there, George. I look on that. That's longer term. Of course, you can always look at it intraday. If you look at a swing time frames like a 90 minute, a 180, and I use a 390 here because that is a full day. Um, so if you're looking at equities, then a full day of the equity um, gives you 390 minutes uh, for that trading period. So you can see that outside of the daily, okay, the uh, the spider had gone into another consolidation period, uh, which continued. You have a a um, what we call this a phantom uh, low, and then a price breakout of a consolidation range. So um, that is easily seen on the daily, but you can see here in the 90 minute that that, that same pattern is identified here. So that you can see that the, the strong push down uh, was, was a price action failure, a pivot point was painted on it showing we're expecting three to five price bars of reversal following that. And so we can see coming right back up into and closing above that just prior to today's action. Yesterday's action showed this, there's still a lot of strength in this market and we're expecting it to push right back up. And that's exactly what it, it opened up and it's going up really strong this morning. So you can see that the volume, the price, the price action clearly identifying and showing that trend and that breakout. If you look into intraday, and of course uh, trading uh, intraday time, you can also see the exact same relationships. If any of you were trading the NASDAQ yesterday, then you could see exactly what we were talking about today. Yesterday, the ex exact same type of action, a little bit of weakness on the open, but a clearly identified signals on the open, clearly bullish coming in. So you can see strength identified, uh, if anybody trading these, you just, if you hold to your rules, if you identify the setup, then trading just becomes second nature. Okay. Identifying your rules, waiting for the setup and the alignment, waiting for all of your constraints to come in line, then you've got a nice entry point, you've got nice conservative targets. Um, it just, you follow the rules you get consistent on taking your profits. So it's the same rules. You don't have to worry about explosions. You don't have to worry about pullbacks. You just follow the rule sets, get in when the identified entry rules are set, and you're good to go. And you know, I, I'm, I, I'm showing these in hindsight, and it's easy to look back and to see those, but I'm showing you what they look like because when you see the signals, the tools help you to identify those trades. So when the market's opening, you, and this is the only chart you're looking at right here, okay? Let me squeeze that back out. 
This is the leading edge of the market. This is what you see when the markets are getting ready to open. And this is what you're identifying. When you see that green trend dot, when you see the green volume and you see the uh, heat map showing you that there's a, a real strong presence, then you look back at your other time frames to identify, is that a good entry or not? Now you can always enter at any time. There's nobody stopping you from taking that entry, but if you want to enter with the minimum risk and the maximum probability for rewards, then that's where the money is. You're, you want to minimize risk as much as possible, maximize your reward potential, because you're trading probabilities. If you're out there just guessing and trying to get in and out based on how you feel, that's gambling. But if you're trading based on probabilities and you, you couple the price action with the volume to minimize that risk, then you, you're greatly increasing the probability that of a successful trade. It doesn't guarantee you're going to have a successful trade. It just makes sure that you're, if you do have a negative trade, your risk will be minimal. And so you'll still have money to trade with on the next one. Okay, well, there it is. That is a con confirmed entry based upon multiple time frames where you can see an alignment. So when you see alignments like that in your trading, it just helps you to take the entries with a lot more confidence. And of course you say, wow, that's, a, that's at the high, I'm buying at the high of the day. Well, you're buying at the high of the day based upon confirmation of price. And if you did buy at that high of the day, then you have a specific risk that you have associated with that, and you also have a reward potential associated with that. Risk not, prop, reward not, okay? But if you risk, then you have a reward. It's all a game of risk and rewards. Okay. And then if you continue to take that, you can see it continues to form new higher highs, which what that's what strong price breaks and price action does, okay? And then it continues to go, and you can, you know, we know what the outcome of that is, but you did not know that coming into it. But if you have a proven set of rules that you have consistently shown over time helps you to trade and make money, then when you see that setup, you're ready to take that trade on the live edge of the market right where the money is. So that's why I showed that to you in hindsight because you'll be able to identify it on the edge of the market and be able to take that trade and trade it. Okay, absolutely. Uh, let's see, can we switch to a five minute? You wanna see what the volume colors are? Alrighty, pull that back. That's a three minute, there's a six minute, so let me pull that five minute. Let me make that a five minute. Here's our five minute chart. What, uh, you want the spider? I can pull the spider up on this one. Look at a five minute. That makes it a little more evident. There was a whole lot of end of day buying going on here. See that? R reading up into the close and then uh, the open, you got a nice low gap up and continuation, still a, continuated, a continuation of buying volume. Very nice. Uh, red volume will always occur, uh, white volume will always occur, and green volume will always occur. So in a strong buying trend, you expect to see a lot of green bars. Yeah. Uh, so when you see the red bars, those are people taking profit. Uh, that is a pause. So the aggressive buying might have stopped for a little bit. So just like in any you know sprint runners or anything, they have to take a breather every now and then. Well, hot markets have to take breathers as well. So. That's the idea behind that. You want to be able to see it, identify it, and trade it based upon the setups and everything. So, so if you see red volume bars, that doesn't mean you ignore them. It just means that you have to identify what that's there for and see if it's going to give you any intent of where that market might want to go. So I started to see one on the... Um, the NASDAQ here, let me pull that back again. Yeah, see here on the six minute chart, you can see the six minute bar, we're starting to see price pushing up. There's a little bit of uh, selling going on here. So there's some profit taking going on. That doesn't mean 
it's over. We need to see what this next bar does in order to see if this is going to be a failure bar or if this is an extension that becomes a pivot. If that's the case, then it does signal a high probability that price might be reversing and that this is a really good time to take profits out of the market. So right now, on at least a six minute, it's telling you that. The five minute, the price closed on the high and did not show a lot of selling, but on the six minute, it came off pretty quick. So see this price bar right here sold off pretty hard, which skewed the six minute bar to show us that that indeed was selling. But the five minute, if we go back to the three minute, yeah, you can see a nice strong up push, but a nice strong down move. But that down move is only about half of the, of the up move. So, so it's you don't ignore them. You just try to interpret them to see if the market's trying to show you if is this a pause or is this just a continuation of trend. If you study the six ways the market moves, which is part of our um, uh, core product teaching, then uh, you can understand that this is a trend run. Even though price comes back and stalls, this is still considered a trend run. This is a trend run, this is a trend run, and this is a breakout of congestion right here. So everything is all set up and moving in that direction. So you don't have to worry about bailing unless your um, trading plan gives you a signal to exit. No, the red bar doesn't shake you out. It might be a great place to give you some profit, if you only have one contract, well, then that might be the place to take your profit and just wait for a new entry. But it's all relative to you uh, and what your specific uh, risk tolerance and trading profile is like. So we give you the opportunity to set your trading style up any way that you like. And that's the strength of it. It's really nice. Oh, you're talking about the wide bars? Oh, this is a, a really nice sign of strength. If you have not already entered this trade, you cannot enter immediately following a wide bar. But uh, when you see multiple wide bars by each other and each one closing greater than the previous, that's a sign of, of real good strength. And so, no, that should not scare you out. Usually what price does when you see this so quickly, it'll consolidate just like we saw previously in the previous day. See right here, price huge surge up in price. What did it, what did it do? After the day was over, it just consolidated. It breathed and then it just continued to today. So if you're looking at longer time frame charts, you're seeing some really nice price action on the longer charts. It just looks explosive on the intraday. So it's all relative to time and uh, what time frame that you're trading. Marcel, uh, how do you know what caused – oh, I already answered that one. Uh, you, and you also want to look at the euro dollar. Okay. Uh, let's look at uh, – here's the time frame chart here. That's the euro yen. You want to look at the euro dollar. Here we currently have a five trend. All right, um, this is the longer time frame, 15 minute, but we're looking at a 5, 15, 30. Um, you can see the uh, the old relationship of trend. Price came back up to a, a new trend direction, but now we, we see some failure, some price action failure. Came back to prior resistance. This is support. Now it becomes resistance. So when you can see price come right back up to that prior resistance level, Okay, then and it fails like it just did here, then you're expecting it to continue this, the original direction. So a downtrend, a correction back up to prior resistance, and then a continuation of the trend with breakout shows that this is probably going to continue. Um, we've, we see the uh, fat boy showing a reversal potential, but the dollar is continuing to strengthen back again. So high probability that this could start to roll back over. So let's look at a faster time frame, like a 30 frame, like a 30 minute. And let's look at a 15 minute. Okay, so you can see that the that strength that was building that we can see is building on that is already starting to roll over overbought on a 15 minute time frame. So it looks like we we might be looking at uh, that either to continue down or to continue to consolidate in this range right now. 
Okay, so if trading a 15-minute time frame chart, then you can see um, the trend directions are the same. Dollar is much stronger than the euro, so the uh, downtrend uh, probably is a higher probability. You can see the New Zealand starting to weaken. Uh, the pound is still extremely weak relative to that as well. So both of those are still interesting to look at, based upon our fat man, of course. George, uh, since you have fixed rules in the system, has Hawkeye ever created an automated trading system? Has can be done in trades? Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, there's no problem in doing that. And we even provide you with the uh, function calls to to sit down and create your own automated strategy. Uh, speaking of that, we do have uh, four longer term trading strategies available on Striker. Striker.com, if you're interested, they are listed under the name Kazakh, Kazakh Technologies. So there are four strategies available that we have uh, worked together to uh, include our methods in. So uh, C-H-A-Z-A-Q, let me spell that for you. Like that. You are very welcome. So if you are interested in trading those, then you can always uh, sign up under Striker. If you don't have time to trade yourself, then you can allow our uh, strategies to do the trading for you. We trade them in our accounts, and then they're just mirrored in your account. So any trades that we take live in our own with our own money, then uh, you take it in your account as well. That's absolutely right. So uh, this can also be traded in with tick charts as well. So a lot of people don't believe that there's a uh, volume can be used in the uh, Forex market. But uh, if you're not using volume in the Forex market, then you do not have the edge. Um, volume gives you the edge in the Forex market because so many people don't use it. So um, that's why it's uh, such a powerful tool. So if we were to look back, oh, sorry. If we were to look back at the uh, setup that we were looking at earlier, I think it was the pound Australian, or was it the uh, Euro US? You can see the uh, extremely long downtrend using the tick charts. Tick chart um, optimizer is called the gearbox. What this does is it looks back over time and gives you uh, a optimized speed based upon the current volatility and expansion of volume in the current market. So as the volume expands and contracts, we give you just the right tick speeds to trade with, which are optimized for trend and to minimize the volatility in that and to give you a really nice tradable pattern. All right, so this one's saying that 568 um, for, a, for a blue, an 11.36 for a yellow and a 22.72 for a red. So tick, these are actual tick charts uh, for the charts that we're looking at trading. You can trade each any of these. So if I were to set this to a 568, okay. this one I set to an 11.36, and this one I would set to a 22.72 then you can see the relationship between those. This is about a 3.4 minute bar, so it's an average time based upon tick. So if you're trading three to five price range, then three to five minutes, then this shows you this is an approximate price range right now based upon the, the separation of ticks and price, all right? And the road kill coupled with that gives you also the continuation marks as well. And you can see also longer time frame con confirmation or trend. So you, you can see the overall change in direction of the longer term trend. And you can see overall direction. Then it helps you to take these trades and to stick with them overall. Uh, Gearbox works with uh, Forex. It works with uh, equities. You, here you can see futures markets uh, using tick charts. Uh, the Gearbox right here is set up to work with 
tick charts on futures markets. It also works tick charts on equity markets as well. I see I don't have one here, but I do have one set up. I've been looking at, and, and I trade uh, Micron uh, on an Apple using tick charts all the time because they're just such beautiful charts. Let me see if I can find that workspace. There it is. Um, oh, wrong folder. There it is. There it is. Let me open that up and show you. Um, on equities, it works with any of the equity markets and it gives you specific settings for that. So here I'm looking at Micron based upon its current expansion. So if you expand this out a little bit, you can see I don't have a lot of data loaded in just to conserve computer resources, but you can see how the market has been expanding and contracting. Huge expansion around Christmas and then it contracted over the uh, holiday and then it uh, came right back up in coming into the new year. All right, so um, that that volatility is smoothed out if you can keep up with it with an optimized time frame. So uh, the blue time frame would be a um, 540. So this becomes now a 540. My second time frame becomes a 1080, and my third time frame here becomes a 2160. Once I set that in the morning, you set it and forget it. So it's, it's ready to go all day long. So you have setups and you trade those based on that. So looking at yesterday's price action, obviously today we are congested. We're not really getting any good signs, but yesterday uh, based upon the entries of right after the consolidation, really nice signal for breakout and profits all day long. Okay. Held you in all day and you got out at the close of the market. Very clear and easy to follow. Even with the longer term signals, uh, you've got uh, the shorter terms uh, to get you there and to enter the trade and to hold you in. All right, rally towards the beginning. Okay, this is the opening of the market. This is 945 marker and then the trade goes on. Okay, so it works exceptionally well in the equities markets as well. And this, this is, this right here is optimized for each instrument. So if I changed it to Apple, then it would give me a whole new set of results because the volume and volatility of Apple is gonna be different than Micron. So each one of them will be specific and focused for the instrument that you're trading. Same thing with Forex. Um, each one of these are gonna be spe specific to the instrument that's traded. So in trading the crude oil market as well, then you can see crude oil is optimized for the crude oil market too. Can the gearbox be purchased as a standalone indicator? It can. It is also part of the big package, but you can purchase it separately. And if you have uh, purchased other tools, then I believe in the members area, it is part of an upgrade. So if you go to the members area and you go over here to the upgrade section, then the gearbox and gear changer are available to you at a member's discount. So if you already have one of our products and you see this is available in the upgrade section, then you can upgrade to that at the uh, discounted price and not uh, at the uh, the full price that you see in the store. So yes, you can purchase it separately. There are two different tools, but uh, the gear combo is what we have on the upgrade and that includes both the equity futures and the Forex gearbox and gear changer. Marcel, uh, did I put the future sign in the regular gearbox or is there a different gearbox to get the tick values for futures? Yes, there's a different, you can't use the 4X gearbox for the futures. Right here, this is the 4X, the gearbox FX, but if I'm using it for futures, then this is just the simple gearbox, it's called Indiex or Index Futures. So there are diff two different versions uh, but this one works specifically for futures and equities. And this one right here works only for Forex. So we have the two separated. Uh, 
they're all doubles. So if you see the first one, this one, the second time frame is a double of the first, the third time frame is a double of the second, and the fourth is a double of the third. So these are all times two. So they're harmonic. And that's the idea behind it. There, it's a harmonic convergence of multiple time frames, which is a key component of the Hawkeye system. Multiple time frames, coherence, synergy, strength, confidence. They're all they all come together. Oh good. Well I'm glad you were able to learn something new then. That's good. So if you're looking at the futures values, the settings of the futures are, are important because the all the futures um, trade on different time frames. So if you're looking at the setup for this, the uh, session templates, this is set on regular session templates, but the session templates um, are going to be very specific based upon the instrument that's traded. So this is a regular session, but the regular session for the S&P.D is from 9.30 in the morning until uh, 4.15 in the evening. Or if you're doing on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which this is based, then it's 8.30 a.m. until 3.15 p.m. Central Standard Time. And that's based upon the settings that you use. So if I were to go in and format the symbol, then you'll see that when I identify the session times for this instrument, that that session time is defined as 8.30 in the morning until 3.15 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday, because the session times are based on the exchange time frame. And that's an important point to note. If you put in different time frames for this, you're going to get different tick values that probably will not be optimized for that instrument. So it's important to make sure when it's set up that you set up the correct properties for the session time that you're trading. If you look at crude oil, for example, then you can see that its session times are going to be quite different. See, it's based upon a crude oil session time, and that crude oil session time is from 9 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because it's traded out of the uh, New York Mercantile Exchange. key point to make sure that you have it set up properly so that the numbers you get are good numbers. Once you have it set up, you forget it. You don't have to do anything of that every day. So it just gives you the values every day. So first thing in the morning when you open up your charts, these are all the all of these numbers were pre-calculated at the close of the uh, market in the previous day. So you have all these numbers brand new ready to go. You change your charts one time and then they're good for the whole day. I do not change my tick charts when I'm in a trade. No, I do I do not think that's a reckless, believe it or not. But but you can and, and you have the ability and the option to do that. Absolutely. Uh, David, as an MT4 user, I always feel like I'm missing out by not having the gearbox, the kiss, the fat boy uh, when trading non forex markets. Uh, well, maybe uh, but that doesn't mean that MT4 is any less because uh, the markets are very, very strong. And using the tools on uh, on MetaTrader 4 uh, give you every, the same advantage. You can see when the trend starts. You can see the automatic trailing stop. Uh, you can see the strength between the, the volume. Uh, using the scanner, uh, the Tomahawk scanner and multiple time frame fat man, the ability to trade off st non-standard time frames, you do have some – uh, features that are there, um, but yes, you don't have the gearbox, uh, you can't use tick charts, you know, there are some limitations to the MT4 platform itself, true, but that's true. That's a choice you got to make. Ninja Trader has all the, the, the bells and whistles, uh, TradeStation has all the bells and whistles, uh, MetaTrader 4 has some limitations, TradingView has some limitations, um, but you have to decide based upon your own trading style, what platform to use and how to, to make those trades and setups. Absolutely. 
So you shouldn't feel like you're missing out. You're just optimize your trading with what you have and make the best of that. I know a lot of people who only trade in MetaTrader 4 who are doing phenomenally well. Okay, uh, do I have trade station scans that you can run on radar screen to find exceptional opportunities across the app? As a matter of fact, if you go back to some of my previous teachings, you'll see that I do spend quite a bit of time on that. If you have purchased the standard package or the professional package, then uh, under the resources, you can see I have included an advanced training course that helps you to go through and identify and show you how to set up the radar screen with your tools to scan for these optimal type of setups. Absolutely, so that is part of and included in your resources uh, if you are a standard package or professional package owner. And if I were to use this as an example, let me see if I can't get that window up here. Then let me pull this other one over. Uh, if I were to look at the scanner, here it is. And you can see there are specific scans that you can look at and use. And here's one that's looking specifically at the Hawkeye trend. I'm looking for setups, okay, that uh, if I were to format that, where I'm looking at the Hawkeye trend, volume, heat map, and then I'm looking at the second time frame. So the first time frame, you can see I've got it set to look at a daily trend. The second time frame, I'm looking at a weekly trend. And the third time frame, I'm looking at a monthly volume. So looking at this, I'm looking at my three-step entry exit setups. I'm trying to find high volume priced target single count trend entries that give me highest probability. So this will scan through the whole universe of stocks. This particular one is looking for all stocks that meet the criteria that I'm looking for for trade entries. And so when that is run, then it gives me these setups. I can look at the initial entry points. So you can see that when that was run on the, on the 15th, that was this point right here. You can see the initial trend dot, you can see the result of that consolidation, high handle, continuation of breakout. So this was an excellent entry point on a nice leading trail of volume coming into that. So Hawkeye identified a very nice entry point uh, on that one. And if you can see this one as well, you can see the 15th right here. So uh, price uh, signaled an entry right here and then it looks like it's still right about that same entry point here. Prior to that, it also caught this one right here which signaled the entry on there. So this one caught this this one, this one, and this one uh, for, for entries, okay? So if you're identifying setups, then the scanner is a really nice tool that helps you to do that. And the Hawkeye tools integrate very nicely with those setup rules. Yes, um, MetaTrader 4 does not have a scanner, so you don't don't have that capability. The uh, scanner that is there, um, if you have the Meta, um, MT4 Professional, then there is a scanner available on MT4 Professional that you can integrate Hawkeye tools with. Those of you who are um, currently using it, then you know that there's a, a an upgrade coming very soon that's going to greatly expand the capabilities of MT4 Professional version. Uh, with the Hawkeye tools, so that's true. Um, so George, I hope that answered your question. David, uh, for my information, you've uh, resubscribed to MT4 Pro. Okay, cool. That's good. You got another month, uh, and you're you're running some beta on the expansions. Nice. I'm glad you got in. So good job. Uh, Marcel, any any chance a radar screen with time between bars indicator is coming? Um, I I don't know. Actually, I don't think it's even been identified. Uh, if you send us an email to support at HawkeyeTraders.com and mention 
the feature request, then we will put that in our queue. And uh, we can, uh, I can assign it to my programmer for a future release if, uh, if it looks uh, doable. So we like to always have good, good information and good ideas like that. So time between bars, does it not currently work right now? Then yes, we can look at uh, in including that. John Nestle wants, what tick settings do you use for the NASDAQ charts? Okay, um, let's see, I don't have NASDAQ on here. Let me go ahead and close Apple down. I do have a NASDAQ tick chart set up, so I'll go ahead and open that, open workspace. There it is. Uh, George, are we looking at professional or standard? Well, you're probably looking at a combination of both, uh, but if it includes the roadkill, then it's probably the professional. If you're looking at the gearbox with the roadkill together, then this is uh, clearly a professional setup, professional package. The standard package, let me see here if I can, there we go. This is a standard package setup where you're, um, actually this, that's not true. Let me turn. So these are the has a roadkill on the standard package does not include the roadkill. So let me see. I think I've got a time here. Okay, now that one has this this the uh, the zones on it. The, um, this chart right here identifies a lot of the tools. You get the trend and stops, uh, the volume, heat map. Uh, you get the uh, levels. Okay, the automatic trailing stop levels tools. All right, so those are all included in the standard package as well. Um, you don't get the fat man, that's an upgrade option. The zones is, is an upgrade option. The tools for radar screen is an upgrade option, but all the tools that you see on the chart, including the uh, the, the pivots, the wide bars, the, uh, the levels, uh, heat map, and trend and stop. So those are all part of the standard. It's the minimum package needed to follow our three-step entry exit method. So that these are parts, these are standard, these are standard. Um, I've got some roadkill on here, so that's not standard. I thought I had one identified, but I don't. NASDAQ, here, we're loaded here. So these are the chick chart settings for NASDAQ today. Looks like you got a nice even number, 250, 500, 1,000, 2,000. Uh, looks like on the 780 at least, so let me put that to 500. It's a little bit faster today. Looks like uh, we've got another entry on the NASDAQ right here about uh, three bars ago, right at 1036, a couple of minutes ago. You can see the alignment. The trend dot went from a white congested in a downtrend to a green trend dot where longer time frame volume and momentum were already bullish. And you could also see that the longer volume and momentum was already bullish. So we were just returning to an existing trend. So what you see here is almost like a, a small time cup and handle where price pattern was identified and recognized by Hawkeye. And then the breakout of that structure gave you confirmation using volume and price. So the road kill is the tool that helps you to identify and get in on these setup trades prior to the explosive action of that coming out of it. So so based upon the optimized time frame, 500 tick, then that gives you a really nice structured pattern entry for that trade. So once that trade is there, then you just enter your rules, you establish your stop, and then you take profits as the trade progresses and continue to trade based upon your own rules. So what the roadkill indicator itself does is it, it shows you on the current time frame, i.e. the 500 tick chart, what the longer time frame charts are. So if this is a 500, then this is going to show you what the trend and volume is for two times that or the 1000 tick chart. So you can see the 1000 tick is the second time frame. So it shows the 
These dots right here are the trend dots for the 1000 tick chart. And these bars right here are the volume bars for the 1000 tick chart. The heat map is part of the roadkill package as well. It's a heat map HT, which means it's a higher time frame heat map. That higher time frame heat map also is based upon two times. That's a short code expression for take the current chart time and multiply it by two. Okay. And the third time frame roadkill just shows you the volume and trend for your third time frame chart. So if you look at it, I've got it set up as a bar interval times four. Four times five is 2,000, which is what we've got there. So it's, it automatically calculates the setup for volume and trend. I told the trend, I don't want to see the trend. I'm not really interested in what the trend is, but I am interested in the leading edge of volume. Volume leads the way. It always tells us where our price is going. So prior to this trend ever establishing itself, we got about half an hour, uh, 15 minutes to half an hour lead time that this volume was pushing and that we were looking for a price break. So that's why I have it set like it is. And then when you get a dot on the second time frame that aligns with the dot on the third time frame, then that is what I refer to as a double dot alignment. A uh, lot of strength that comes when volume is aligned on multiple time frames. And when you see price action doing the same thing, that's a really great in signal for entry. And that's what Roadkill does for you. It shows you the longer time frame alignment of the faster time frame that you're currently trading, and it signals uh, opportunities to enter or get out of the trade. So it's an extremely powerful indicator and it allows you to take and to manage trades and to take trades using a single chart that would normally take three charts to trade so if I were just looking at this chart by itself then I could take that and trade just this chart by itself because I've got all the information I need to follow my three-step entry exit method rules on a single chart Um, price explosions vary um, based on time of day, um, different information, but whenever you see the roadkill, that's the very large blob, what that does is identifies when the trend comes out of trend and back into trend again. So when you see consolidation and basically goes into congestion when the trend changes and but continues in the original direction, if that trend is not changed on the longer time frames. You notice this second time frame trend dot is green, 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 green the whole time. Well, this one went out of trend, but then it went back into trend. Those are usually where explosive action occurs. And you can see that right at that point, that's when you started to see price continue and to build with momentum into that trade. So the roadkill indicators usually identifies when those occur. So on this one, you can see that the consolidation was much longer, but the second time frame trend went gr didn't stay green. So there's not as much strength in that one. So when they when they did realign, they realigned with an alignment signal, not a roadkill signal. So there's there's some minor differences there, but once you understand it, then it becomes extremely powerful uh, as a tool. John, understood about the multiple time frames. Why do you feel tick charts are better than time charts? I never said tick charts are better than time charts. I'm just saying that these tools are work and optimized with tick charts. And we have an optimizer that helps you to see and use it on tick charts. You can still use Renko, but the gearbox won't give you Renko bars to plot based on. And the Hawkeye tools do work on Renko bars very nicely. Uh, but the roadkill itself will not work with rank R bars. 
So you have to use just standard roadkill tool, I mean standard tools if you're using Renko setups and bars. So the trend, the volume, the heat map, all the other tools work with Renko, Unirenko, all the other different uh, ninja type Renkos, but the uh, roadkill will not work with the Renko bars, neither will the gearbox. It's made specifically to convert into tick optimized tick settings. That's exactly right. Awesome. Well, that about does it for me today. Thank you very much for your time and attention today. I've gone over about 15 minutes, but that's fine. If you do have any other questions or comments, then on the Hawkeye Traders website, if you go to HawkeyeTraders.com, www.HawkeyeTraders.com, go there to learn more information. If you want to learn more about any of our indicators, you can click on this link. If you want to find out what the prices are, just go to the store. Today, you already signed up in our free training room, but uh, as far as education, uh, you can also learn a little bit more about what our Tomahawk Forex trading system is all about. Today's video uh, will be located in the training room videos section, and uh, you can always visit any of our educational partners as well. And as always, at the very bottom of every website, you'll find a Contact Us link. Of any page, just go to the bottom and click on Contact Us, and it'll take you to a form that you can fill out and submit, and it'll go right to us, or you can just email us directly, support at HawkeyeTraders.com, or if you're a Skype user, uh, it's a great way to interact with other users as well. Hawkeye Traders support, we can help you there on Skype. You're very, very welcome. Um, Happy New Year to everyone that's here. Thank you for joining me today. David, Vanna, George, Marcel, John. You guys are awesome. Thanks for all the great questions and interaction today. I appreciate your time. You guys uh, enjoy your, your trading new year. Be safe, and I hope it's prosperous for you. Let me go ahead and stop the recording at this point.